Hi there, good afternoon. My name is Walter Uzzolino and I am the founder and curator of Walter Presents. And uh, I'm here today to talk to you about our second release, the second book we're about to launch in our fantastic collaboration with Pushkin Press. And I'm particularly proud about this because it's uh, an Italian novel by a contemporary writer. And so uh, uh, trying to find it meant that I had to delve quite a bit in literature and fantastic stories coming from my country of origin, which has been really good fun. Um, the novel in question, and I have the original Italian here, the, the book uh, hasn't yet come out, the British translation, in fact, uh, I think a package of uh, brand new mint copies is on its way to me, so I'm very excited to be able to open it soon. Um, it's called The Second Life of Inspector Canessa, and it is by Roberto Perrone, who is an Italian novelist and journalist. Um, and it's a really exciting, nail-biting thriller, which tells the story of a little-known chapter of Italian history. Uh, it is the terrorist years, also known as the years of lead, from the early 70s to the late 80s, and the action takes place between the past and the present. The main protagonist is a gritty, really interesting cop, a man called Annibale Canessa. He's a former cop, and he's now retired, and he is living in a very small and beautiful enclave of the Italian Riviera, a place called San Fruttuoso, very near Portofino. And I have to admit, I was swayed by that because I come from there. And so it, uh, reading about that literally particular part of the world brought me back to my childhood quite a lot. And I was excited to see it featured in a piece of literature. And um, Canessa lives there with his aunt and he's decided, an elderly woman who runs a restaurant and he's decided to help her run the restaurant. And we know that he has a dark and troubled past that he's trying to get, get away from. Um, but the past comes brutally back into his present when his brother, Napoleone, um, a normal average family man with an office job, gets uh, uh, shot in the centre of Milan and is found killed outside the main station. Lying next to him is a terrorist who's also been shot with him. Um, and this is a terrorist that Annibale had put behind bars many years before and that has only recently been released from prison. And then this brutal murder uh, throws and catapults Annibale, Annibale back into his past, into the life that he had been trying to escape as he uh, launches his own private investigation into the death of his brother. Uh, as soon as he realises that the powers that be, the actual police force and the magistrates, would rather the story doesn't get investigated uh, because they have something to hide. And so begins a really exciting novel, which is a mosaic about the years of lead, um, the sort of terrorist spree um, of the Red Brigades, which tormented Italy between the 70s and the 80s and the present time. I think it's a really uh, exciting, dark and nail-biting thriller. And what's interesting about that is that it's set in Milan, which makes it quite different from traditional Italian uh, crime thrillers, which, you, uh, which normally we associate with the South. Uh, uh, with Naples or with Sicily, where the, sort of the mafia and the traditional milieu of Italian crime is set. This is in chic, sexy uh, uh, financial capital of Italy, Milan, and so it's the backdrop that makes the book quite different from what we're used to and, and incredibly exciting. And to me, it has all the qualities of a riveting uh, uh, Tom Wolfe style bonfire of the vanities in the way that it portrays the layers of corruption. Uh, between uh, 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 and the sort of and the collusion of power between politics, journalism, and uh, and the armed forces, and uh, it's an incredibly exciting nail-biting story, and uh, uh, and I hope you'll enjoy it very much. Um, and uh, uh, now on to three more books, um, three more Italian novels that uh, have inspired me over the years and that I think are very exciting that I would like to uh, point as, uh, as interesting options for anybody who's interested in delving into the world of Italian literature. So first thing first, uh, I think it's the cheerful and enjoyable sunshine of Inspector Montalbano, which is from Andrea Camilleri, uh, and it's the 13th instalment in the Montalbano saga, and it's called The Potter's Field. It's a really lovely, enjoyable uh, piece of divertissement. Most of you will know Inspector Montalbano uh, uh, because of the uh, worldwide sensation of the TV um, series, but also the books themselves have sold millions of copies around the world. Uh, and it's, it's a really uh, interesting and twisted case for Inspector Montalbano, the Potter's Field. This time he has to deal with a body which has been chopped up in 30 different pieces. And it, it's a clever and funny plot, but as ever, it's never so much about the plot. It's more about the colour, the humour, the warmth, 
and the local characters, uh, the long-suffering girlfriend Livia and, and some of his colleagues which, which seem to be scheming against him and in this particular case it's quite exciting because Montalbano knows that somebody close to him might be betraying him and yet he still has to save him. Um, this is a really breezy, enjoyable piece of summer reading um, which I warmly recommend if you're uh, interested in uh, uh, tasting the, the lovely Sicilian flavour of Inspector Montalbano. But uh, onto another one which is very different, which is from Roberto Saviano. Most of you would also know that because of the big uh, globally successful television series, and it's Gomorra. Gomorra was published in Italy in 2006 and it was a bit of a cultural earthquake and an incredible watershed moment in terms of literature and culture and social political culture, in that Saviano brought the rigour and the toughness of an incredible journalist, but also the poetic ability of a great novelist to an in-depth analysis of criminality in Naples, a city he obviously loves and adores because that's where he was born and raised, but also a city that tears him apart. And it's, it's about the absolute uncompromising bleakness of the criminal underworld in Naples. It's a world where children at the age of 12 shoot their first uh, uh, shotguns and where young kids dream of being killed in the end or, or, or of dying in the context of, uh, of a shootout because that's a somehow a honourable thing. It's a place where drug addicts get, you, get used as uh, guinea pigs to test new dangerous drugs. And it's a place where there's interesting collusion between the highest squalor of the miserable underworld and the powers that be in high finance and, uh, uh, and the world of drug trafficking. Um, it's, a, it's a very, very punchy read. And uh, most of you will probably know the series because it's become internationally successful, but it's a very interesting opportunity to go back to the original and to read what is a wonderful piece of literature, but also a wonderful journalistic essay and an uncompromising one that, as most of you may know, has cost uh, uh, Roberto Saviano uh, uh, quite a lot personally because because the threats that followed the public publication of the book meant that he's have been having to live uh, under police protection since then so it's it's a really really compelling uh, book and then uh, traveling back up north uh, for an incredibly elegiac and haunting family drama um, from Giorgio Bassani published originally in 1962 this one is called The Garden of the Finzi Contini's, which is already an incredibly exotic title, Il Giardino dei Finzi Contini. And it's, it's the story of a wealthy aristocratic Jewish family uh, towards the late 30s, as they gently slide towards the horror and the annihilation of the racial laws and of the Second World War and the horror that went with it. And it's told through the perspective of the narrator, who is a young man who is a, a middle-class Jewish boy from Ferrara, who is fascinated and watching from afar uh, the, 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 the cloistered, wealthy life of the Finzi Contini's who live in their mansion, and, and is fascinated by their daughter, Nicole. And only years later, in 1938, he gets admitted to the garden of the Finzi Contini's, which opens up and becomes a sort of sanctuary where the Jewish community gathers uh, to seek some form of protection as the clouds of racial laws uh, gather around them and 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 the brutality of the war becomes closer and closer to their reality. Uh, I will say no more, I won't spoil it, but it's an incredibly beautiful and elegiac piece of literature. It's, it's, it, it literally is about a family and a community that is gradually sliding into annihilation. So it's partly a celebration of old values and of innocence, but framed by the darkness that's about to hit them all. Um, it's a really, really significant piece, and it became a film uh, in 1970s as well, which I highly recommend. It's a lovely piece of vintage cinema, which uh, was uh, awarded several prestigious awards, including a BAFTA, I believe. Um, so there you have it. So I would say the uh, second life of Inspector Canessa, uh, for anybody who wants to dip into the state of brilliant Italian literature right now, a great crime thriller in the tradition of Yone's Boat, to be honest. So if you like sort of Scandinois, this is one for you. And then, and then the pleasurable divertissement of Montalbano, the, the gritty uh, analysis of Gomorrah, and, and the sort of beautiful literary tragedy of the Second World War, which is the Garden of the Finzi Continui. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoy the books.